सब्सक्राइब टू बिजबो एंड प्रेस द बेल आइकन सी बोरिंग न्यूज टर्न इन टू एंजॉयबल स्टोरीज सम शिपिंग लेन्स आर जस्ट टू इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द वर्ल्ड द स्ट्रेट ऑफ मलाका इज वन द पनामा कनाल इज इन अदर एंड द वॉटर्स अराउंड एफ्रीका इन द मिडल ईस्ट दैट इंक्लूड द स्ट्रेट्स ऑफ बाबल मंदेब हॉर्मोज एंड तिरान एंड द सुइस कनाल China is most susceptible when it comes to the Strait of Malacca which the US can blockade in the event of hostilities an act that would put a stop to the access of oil from the Middle East to safeguard against which they are spending 47 billion dollars building the China Pakistan economic corridor via Gwadar through India's Gilgit Baltistan area controlled by Pakistan to ensure undisrupted supply as regards the Panama and Suez canals World trade has become so used to the shorter routes provided by both these countries that factories across continents depend on the predictability of the movement of goods to service their just-in-time inventory models. So when the massive 1300 foot 400 meter long container ship ever given more than double the size of the Statue of Unity, the world's tallest statue, navigated with an all Indian crew of 25 men entered the canal in the early hours of march 23rd the world had no idea that 12% of global trade would come to a standstill for the next few days high gusts of wind at around 40 knots 74 kilometers per hour not abnormal in the suez was reported on the fateful day as the vessel entered the mouth of the canal at that speed tropical storms are reclassified as hurricanes with the power to shatter residential windows canal authorities so as to ensure everyone's safety mandatorily board suez pilots who are familiar with the conditions and can navigate the vessel often at these wind speeds tugboats are used to keep the ship on course but this was not done with the ever given though the two vessels ahead reportedly had used them the speed limit on the suez canal is between 7.6 to 8.6 knots but due to high winds the crew in conjunction with the suez pilots decided to increase its speed as is often done to better control the vessel the 13 and a half knots they were moving at drove the ever given closer to the west bank trying to correct course they then veered to the east bank but heavy winds banked it too far right propelling the bow of the ship into its sands the momentum of this massive ship even larger than the canal's width of 205 meters slowly angled the stern to run aground on the opposite side parts of the northernmost section of the canal is a two way lane but the ship was not stuck there unfortunately it hit the bank on the southern part of the canal where there is only a single lane the ever given is not the only ship to get stuck in the 120 mile long canal in 2004 an oil tanker got lodged in the waterway for 3 days in 2006 sandstorms and high winds caused a 93000 ton cargo ship to drift off at a wrong angle temporarily blocking the canal in 2017 another ship steering malfunction causing it to be a perpendicular to its course and block the canal in all cases tugboats were able to dislodge the ship within a few hours but none of them was remotely as big as the ever given as tugboats tried pulling the ship with cables in an attempt to free it dredgers began to dig mud and sand from under the bow and the stern front and back of the ship to try help refloat it if these had failed there would have been a third option removing some cargo and fuel from the vessel to lighten its load and help move it but getting a crane close enough to remove some of the 20000 20 foot containers without unbalancing the ship would have been highly challenging and could create a greater problem if the vessel toppled over but the tugboats and dredging helped by high tides proved sufficient and finally on march 29th the ship dislodged in the 6 days the ever given was stuck the 367 vessels waiting to pass through the canal had blocked trade worth roughly 54 billion dollars how international this incident is can be judged by the fact that the vessel was owned by a japanese firm operated by a taiwanese shipper crewed by indians flagged in panama with the accident in egypt however the suez is located in a very volatile region and there remain multiple flash points that may blockade the canal once again Sunni Saudi's 5-year war against the Houthis of Yemen is really a proxy war against Shiite Iran in which the UAE in support of the Saudis and to keep the waterways open have taken control of some of Yemen's ports 
Mocha, Aden and Mukala and set up an airbase at Perim Island at Babal Mandeb, just 8 miles off Yemen. A larger flare-up may block access to this narrow 26 to 29 km passage that connects the Gulf of Aden to the Red Sea. Already neighbouring Djibouti has several military bases of the US, France, Italy, Japan and since 2017, China. For India, China's setting up of a 2,000-man logistical base in Djibouti can be seen as threatening in case of a standoff. Then there are increasing skirmishes between Iranian and Israeli vessels in the Red Sea, like when an Iranian ship allegedly smuggling weapons was targeted and damaged by Israeli mines, adding to the tension in the region. Israel is seeking to provoke a response from the Iranians, which will give it the perfect excuse to bomb their Isfahan and Nantes nuclear facilities that in turn may ignite a wider conflict. Then there is a new flashpoint developing between Ethiopia and its neighbours over the construction of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam on the River Nile, just 30 kilometres south of Sudan's border. The dam with 6.35 gigawatt of installed capacity will increase Ethiopia's electricity by four times. However, filling the massive GRD reservoir too quickly could substantially thin the river's flow by the time it travels across Sudan into Egypt, so as not to affect their country's main source of drinking water and irrigation facilities, Egypt wants Ethiopia to increase the number of years it takes to fill the Gerd reservoir from 6 to between 12 and 21 years. Something for which he is ready to fight for. No one can take a drop of Egypt's water and if it happens, there will be inconceivable instability in the region. While Somalia's over-decade-long pirate problem was contained only by the coordinated action of 33 countries, war and conflict, however, is a constant in the region. In 1967, 50 ships were stuck in the middle of the Suez Canal for eight years, after Egypt blockaded and shut down the waterway in response to Israeli forces who invaded and occupied the Suez Canal's east bank. Much earlier too, in 1956, British, French and Israelis jointly invaded the Egyptian Hel Sinai Peninsula basically to control the Suez but gave other reasonings. The Strait of Tehran, crucial to Israeli ships exiting the Red Sea to trade with Africa and Asia, was earlier another point of possible conflict, to solve which the US in the 60s wanted to carve out an alternative to the Suez Canal through a hundred kilometers of Israel's Negev Desert to reach the Mediterranean. But they quickly dropped the plan to keep their oil-producing Arab allies happy. Israel, however, is reportedly still considering it. An alternative route through Israel could force semi-hostile countries to keep better relations with them as well as earn them substantial revenue. Both canals, Panama 800 million and Suez 5.6 billion, generate approximately 2% of their country's GDP. As a rule of thumb, a fully laden 20,000 TEU container vessel like the Ever Given could expect to pay around $700,000 in transit fees. With the Egyptians losing six days of revenue and incurring costs in freeing the vessel, they are now looking at ways to recover this loss. The weather was one reason, but maybe there was a technical error or a human error. Putting a claim of $1 billion on the ship's owner, the Japanese firm Shoei Kishin Kaisha, later offering to lower it to $600 million. The vessel's charterer, Taiwan's Evergreen Marine Corps, also refused to take responsibility for the delay of the cargo in reaching its destination. There is almost no chance that we will be sought to pay compensation. Looks like this incident is going to turn into a game of passing the blame and will likely see several lawsuits. If and when the matter does go to court, the hearings are likely to be held in Egypt, as the ship, its cargo and crew is currently anchored in the Great Bitter Lake, a large saltwater body that is part of the Suez Canal. Other than two of its Indian crew who were released for emergency reasons, the rest are still stuck on board the ship. Efforts are on to keep them safe, but it will be months before the crew and probably years before the Ever Given will return to hauling cargo and sailing on calmer waters. Bezbo's Limerick The Suez Canal is Egypt's pride a place through which all ships must ride. But can world trade adjust if the gulf combusts? Can they still keep it open when the region collides? Subscribe to Bisbo and click on the bell icon to get notified whenever Bisbo releases a new video. 
Sources of all our information is listed in the video description section.